So regarding CRM, what Kieran made clear is that all the leads are created from the website. Every prospect are meant to go to the website to contact the sales team. What we did is set up a contact us form page on the website and this can be done by going to customize and add features from the website app. By going to the contact form, you can see that the information is quite, quite simple. There's the name, phone number, email and all that. To save us some time, obviously I already set those up. In this case, Steve Jobs turns out to be interested in our company and wants to have more information about our branded t-shirts. And when he's going to submit this form, the sales team will be able, from the same CRM app, to see this new lead, right? Now, when there's going to be dozens of leads, they want to prioritize them, to give them some weight, some kind of, of sense of priority. And this can be done with those small stars you see there that can be, uh, that, that range from like low, low priority to high. In this case, I'm going to send this one to two, for instance. And when there's going to be many, this one is going to go first. I mean, unless there's some with three stars, obviously. He also wanted to have to improve the follow-up on, on the different leads. The sales team tend to schedule calls, meetings, and you want all those to have reminders and some kind of following up, some kind of automation as well, right? This can be done with a scheduled activity from the chatter right there. And to give, up some idea, to give you some idea on how far we can go, um, what is possible with those activities, I created two extra ones, a qualification call and follow-up call activity type. And what I told Odoo is that when an activity of qualification call type is marked as done, you write some feedback. And when it's going to marked as done, it's going to schedule the next one, follow-up call, automatically for a week into the future. So if you do that, your sales team is going to have a much easier time following up and sending up reminders because much of those extra following up, follow up calls can be automated, right? So now that this, is, that this is covered, we can go to the product configuration. And now let's go to the sales app to see how we configured the product catalog. You can see there are two categories we came up with, the B2B products and the B2C products. Our, own, our only B2B product for now is the custom t-shirt. And if we go to the variance tab, you can see there are three attributes, the size of the t-shirt, its color, and the placement of the logo. Now, if you do not see this tab, it means that you have to go to the configuration of the sales app and actually enable the, the variance. In this case, we came up with a few, uh, at, few values for those three attributes, and all those sum up to 36 different variants that Odoo is going to create directly for you. And if I go to the, to the, back to the catalog and take a look at one of my B2C products, for instance, the Coca-Cola t-shirt, you can see it's fairly similar. The only difference being that uh, we do not have the logo placement attribute since the logo essentially, is essentially already placed. So the only variables and dimensions we need to, to handle in this case are the size of the t-shirt and, uh, and its color. And now we're going to go to the e-commerce app to see how it looks like on this side. So now let's see how it looks like from my eShop. By going to the shop menu, you can see I have two different e-commerce categories. The favorite prints category and the custom design category. Basically my B2C and B2B products. Let's say I want this Odoo shirt, one of my B2C products. I can choose the size and the color. And that's pretty much it. But if I'm a B2B client, I obviously want to give extra information regarding the logo I want on my shirt. I can go to custom design and say my custom t-shirt. I can also choose the size, the color, and on top of this I can also choose the logo placements. Let's go for the chest in this case, and I want 20 of them. I add this to my cart, and you can see this is a fairly regular checkout process. I go further, and in this case, we have an extra info tab. And this one we added by going to customize and extra step option. And the reason we did that is that for B2B clients, we want to give them the opportunity to give us more information about the design they want and obviously loading the logo they want on their shirt. So in this case, they can write down some reference. All of this is, is mandatory. It's not mandatory. It's, uh, it's up to them if they want to, to input it or not. And I can load my custom design if I already have it. So now the logo is loaded, so I can go further. And this is the end of my checkout process. I can confirm the order. And you can see now the order is submitted. 
And now we're going to see how it looks like from the sales app. So here you can see the quotation that has been created when I confirm the eShop sale. Now, all the information the client gives in the extra info step of the checkout process can be found in the chatter of this quotation, including the logo I need so bad for my process. The salesperson can schedule an activity just like for the leads, such as, such as call emails or the qualification and follow-up call uh, activities that we set up earlier. And what's important to note here is that Kieran told us that his goal was to improve visibility and to simplify, simplify things. He wants Odoo to make his life simpler, his business simpler. He does not want to complicate, overcomplicate things which says, with things just like stock or inventory management while he does not care about those, right? So what we did, instead of using the manufacturing app and the inventory app, which require a lot of implementation and knowledge and time, we decided to set up the custom shirt as a service. So I'm going to show you that right now. So as you can see, the custom shirt is set as a service. And since Kieran wants, um, the, um, wants his employees to record time on the different tasks or on the different tasks they perform, I, I installed the Timesheet app, which allows me to, if you go to the sales tab of the product, it allows me to, to tell the system to create a task in an existing project when this service is sold. Now, I created a project called Manufacturing that we're going to see in a second. And what happens when I sell a custom shirt is that it creates a task for this order with the same name in the manufacturing project. I'm going to show you that right now. So let's say I confirm it. And now you can see that I have a task that has been created. And this one can go through the stages, new framing, printing, packing. Obviously, those stages are up to Kieran. But the idea is that project make using project instead of manufacturing allows him to have visibility, to have reporting, since his employees can called timesheets right there and does not overcomplicate things since stock is a no-go for them. They don't care about it, right? Just to give you an idea, here is what the his manufacturing process overview would look like. I'm going to the manufacturing project and you can see that I have different stages. Obviously those can be edited at will and each order will go from one stage to the next, which is much simpler than handling manufacturing and stock. So here it is, this is our solution for Kieran's use case. It's simple, ready to go, and you can start using it right away. How did you solve Kieran's use case? Please feel free to share your own solution with us, and thank you for watching.